Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I just wanted to take a couple of minutes today to show you the progress on the ESP32 Game Boy Color build. A uh, big shout out goes to Duke Alex from the Odroid Go development team for Retro Go. He's been doing a lot of work to get that ported over here and I've been helping him out a bit as I can as well. First thing I want to show you here is just Game Boy. Obviously it's on a Game Boy Color, and so it's going to have a color palette instead of instead of the standard, I think it's monochrome, or just black and white calculator type screen. I always just called it the calculator screen. As you can see though, it's running okay. But Game Boy ran okay on the stock firmware too, so we're going to get out of here in a moment here. And we'll move over to Game Boy Color. Because I remember when I loaded the link here, Link to the Past or whatever it's called, the DX, the it was laggy. I could hear choppiness in the audio, which is no longer present now. So that's a definite bonus for sure, I believe, since this is in fact a Game Boy Color. It should be able to run Game Boy Color. I really enjoy this, actually, because of the fact it's using a real Game Boy Color case and buttons and everything, and can actually play all of the the games. I kind of look at it as having a Game Boy Color with an IPS screen upgrade done to it and an EverDrive cartridge, basically. Only it can play a few more systems than that can. Take notice of the, the broken color patterns in the bottom of the screen there. That'll be fixed over the next few days. I used to love this game when I was younger. We still got to work... Uh, volume and brightness controls into the menu options. Currently everything works reasonably well, but uh, the graphics need some adjustments, a couple of emulators need some adjustments. Think of this as like a, a developer preview or an update of the status along the way. As you can see here, the graphics are a bit broken. The game works fine. It's not lagging or anything like that, but the graphics need some work here. Some game gear. Also want to give a big shout out to my retro game case for this particular ESP32 Game Boy Color. There's several different models of this available. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the video so you guys can grab one if you would like or check out the website, see what else he has. The CM4 Game Boy Advance also comes from the same place. If you've been watching my other videos. It is kind of neat being able to play Sonic on a Game Boy Color. Also, when you save, that works as well. It creates a save state, so you can pick up where you left off. You don't have to start over or worry about being able to save your game. This is PC Engine. This emulator does work. Also, oh, just lose this, actually. I'll show you this. Coleco works as well, but it needs some work. It causes a, a panic on exit which isn't really a big deal, but it shouldn't happen, so it needs to be fixed. And as you can see, that nasty graphics there. NES does the same thing with the graphics. Super Nintendo on here as well does work, but because there's a lack of buttons, I'm not sure if it's really feasible to play Super Nintendo on here. Atari 2600 would make sense, though. As you can see, though, none of the stuff I'm playing is laggy. Although a graphic bug just caused me to disappear completely. 
and I can no longer see myself. Yep, I'm gone. Moving on. Ah, here we go. Atari Lynx. This works as well. All in all, I'd say you're going to probably get around 10 systems, give or take. 8 to 10. Which isn't bad if you consider the fact that this is a... I think it's 59 or $60 right now. So for 60 bucks, you get a Game Boy Color with a emulation inside of it that actually runs from a cartridge as well. So it's, it's, it's definitely, for 60 bucks, not bad. If it was, you know, 120, 150 bucks like some of these handhelds, I'd probably say it's not worth the money. But for $60, it is definitely cool. See if Super Nintendo wants to pop up. Yeah, it does, but the graphics again, they're all broken. And even if I were to press start and start playing the game, I only have, <coughs> excuse me, two of the four buttons that I would need anyways. So I'm not really sure what good that's going to do regardless. So I'm going to end the video with that. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.